For many years, there were no Christians in the Nishi tribe in the Salansini district in India. Uh, missionaries were discouraged. It seemed like nobody was interested in Christ. But all that changed one day. A high government official's youngest son became terminally ill. A Hindu pharmacist said to him, why don't you try the Christian doctor, Jesus Christ? I hear he raised a man named Lazarus from the dead who'd been dead for four days. Well, the government official went home that night, and when he arrived, he heard wailing and crying inside. He knew what that meant. His son was dead. He walked in the house, he walked up the stairs, opened his son's door, and kneeled down by his bed, and he placed his hand on his son, and he said, Jesus, I don't know who you are, but I hear you raised a man, Lazarus, from the dead who'd been dead for four days. My son has only been dead for like a few hours. And if you raise my son, even though I don't know who you are, I promise you, my family and I will worship you. Well, immediately, the little boy's eyes began to flicker, and he woke up. And the results of that miracle were amazing. People said, Jesus, who are you? How much love you have for us? And over the next couple of weeks, hundreds of people committed their lives to Jesus Christ. Scores upon scores of people committed their lives to Christ because they saw God's supernatural work in their midst. Have you experienced miracles in your life? When Jesus came to earth, he performed a lot of miracles. After he was raised from the dead, the apostles did a lot of miracles. In the Old Testament, we read that the prophets did miracles, particularly Elijah and Elisha. Can we do miracles today? You may wonder, well, why don't we see many miracles today? What's happened? Are we supposed to? Can we? I believe so. Jesus said, after he'd performed many miracles, Truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to my Father. Jesus says, when I go to my Father, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, and you're going to have the Holy Spirit with you, so you can do these same miracles I do. Have you experienced supernatural miracles in your life? I'd like you to just stop for a minute and share with your group. Uh, share if you have experienced them or not. Uh, just put me on pause, and uh, then when you're done, come on back. If you've committed your life to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in you. And with that power, you can do extraordinary supernatural miracles. Uh, you can expect to see the supernatural in your life. Uh, you can experience the supernatural power of God in your life. And I want to show you how. I want to show you how by looking at an Old Testament prophet named Elisha. Uh, this is the first of a five-week series, Have You Seen the Supernatural Power of God Lately? Almost every page in the Bible where we read about Elisha, we see a miracle. Elisha, uh, when his mentor Elijah's life was coming to the end, God told Elijah, I'm going to take you to heaven without you having to die. And before uh, that happened, he turned to Elisha and he said, tell me, what can I do for you before I'm taken from you? Elisha answered, let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. He wanted to be able to carry on the ministry that Elijah had. Uh, and Elijah says, you've asked a difficult thing. It was a difficult thing to grant because it was only God's to grant who would be his, uh, Elijah's successor. But Elijah put a condition on it. He said, if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise not. It was imperative for Elisha to see the chariots and the the riders from the other world come and take Elijah away because there would be times when it would get tough and he would need to be reminded of that day when angels touched down on earth and took Elijah away. As they were walking along the road and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elijah saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. 
Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them apart. Uh, the whirlwind subsided, the dust stopped, and Elisha picked himself up from off the sand where he had pushed himself when the angels came, and he realized that Elijah was gone. He also realized that the condition had been met. He had seen Elijah taken away. So here's the first principle if you want to experience God's supernatural power working in your life. Cultivate awareness of the unseen supernatural power of God. If you want to see the power of God working in your life, you first have to know that the supernatural is there. Every time something amazing happens, don't immediately go to the natural explanation, but be aware that God is supernatural and He's involved in your life so supernatural things will happen. The second thing that may help you experience supernatural power in your life is believe that God's supernatural power is available to you. After Elijah was taken, Elisha must have wondered, will I have the Spirit's power in me now? And we read that he went down to the river and he took uh, Elijah's coat and he uh, struck the water of the Jordan so he could walk through. Uh, just uh, hours before, Elijah had done the same thing before he was taken away. So Elisha's wondering, will I be able to do the same thing? Where now, he, he asks, is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over. The company of the prophets from Jericho who were watching, these were uh, people that Elijah had mentored and now probably Elisha will mentor, they said, the spirit of Elijah is resting on Elisha. And they went down to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Clearly now the spirit was resting on Elisha. But Elisha had to believe that the supernatural power of God was now going to rest on him, that it was going to be available to him. I've seen many pastors come and go from churches. I've seen ministry leaders leave. And it always goes the same way. People kind of wring their hands and say, oh, now what are we going to do? We're toast. Church is going to fall apart. You know, our, our Saturday men's Bible study, a couple of years ago, the ministry leader left and Guys are thinking, I think we're going to fall apart. But now we have new people in there teaching, and I think it's going better than ever. Or a, a, a women's ministry leader leaves, and all the people say, we're, we're going to die now. But then somebody new God brings in, and things carry on. Uh, you have to believe that God can use you. Uh, God uses ordinary people like you and me. Uh, James, in the New Testament, says, Elijah was a man just like us. He wants us to know that Elijah and Elisha were human beings just like us. They pulled their pants on one leg at a time. They're ordinary people, but they just decided to stay tight with God and let Him use them. You can experience the supernatural power of God in your life. All right, I'd like you to uh, stop now and talk with your group. You can discuss maybe something I said. If you have our journals, you can open that up and... Maybe if people have come prepared, you can share your answers from the journals. If, if nobody's prepared, you could actually go through the journal right now if you have a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, you could take your iPhone and use your Bible app. If you don't have a Bible app, help the people in your group uh, download it right now, and uh, hopefully you'll have a great discussion. Hope to see you back here in a week.